Hello and welcome to Gitterk Farms. We're back with another episode of Clark Farms by MRG Mapping. Today we're going to be jumping into harvest, so we need to go get the rest of our equipment and get started. Alright, so we've got the grain truck and the grain cart out here in the field now. And we're going to go and try and catch up with this combine and see if we can unload him here somewhere. Whoa, we are taking out rows of corn. Um, I want to unload him before he gets up to the other end where all the trees are at for sure. And ideally, unload him on the go if there's a possibility to do that. Maybe up here on this uh, long rows back up. I think there's some good grass areas right here. I can get up here before we get to the tree line. It looks like this is a setup that's probably going to work for us. I'm not entirely sure I would trust a uh, horse play to run this uh, grain cart given that it has some issues, but uh, it's working out well enough for us to manually do this at the, this point in time. And I'm super curious to see how much corn we get off of this field since we're going to be able to sell it here in a few short days from a season's perspective. Um, I know that... Uh, Midwinter is a good point in time to sell some corn. And we've definitely got loans that need to be paid off. So I'm going to let him kind of go along and do his thing here. Uh, it's going to be really hard to unload him while he's in all these trees. And so we'll probably just... Uh, follow along here since I think he's probably going to be ready to unload again as we get over there onto the other side of the field along our grass field. Alright, so he's made it around the trees and we're on the way back down here. I thought it best if we unloaded here before he starts getting on those curvy rows again. Might as well see if I can get enough to put into the truck here. Now I'm going to get a little tight into this truck. I'm a little bit worried. It looks like we've made it and that is quite the ditch ahead of us. So I think we're going to just pause here for a second and whip around and see about putting what we've got into the truck so far. The fill plane on this trailer is a little bit awkward so I'm never quite sure how much grain I have in the trailer until I start putting it back into the truck. And so I don't expect we have enough to fill the truck up yet, but we're gonna see. I really wanna get the corn dryer going on this map because this corn dryer is something that's a little bit unique and I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. And so I've been kinda waiting for that. Um, it is a global company mod. Um, and so I expect it to work just like any of the other global company grain dryers. So uh, it is pretty small though, uh, which is interesting to me. But we will be just taking the grain right back out of it and putting it into uh, a larger bin. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how that works out. Now my cart just stopped unloading. It looks like there's a lot of grain down there, but apparently it's 0.1 bushels. So. We're going to ignore that for the time being. And we're going to rush back up here and unload this uh, combine one more time. And then hopefully that'll be enough to take a half a truckload up to the farm site and monkey with the grain dryer and see if we can get that going. I just want enough grain to make sure that we're actually uh, running it through there and uh, we'll see if it can keep up. I'm not sure what the settings are for this particular green dryer, so it's gonna be pretty interesting to see how it works, I think. We set up a fairly elaborate auger setup. Uh, can't see it super well from back here, uh, a little bit in the distance there, so we'll take a closer look at that when we get up there with the green truck for sure. And just checking on our fill level. Looks like we got a decent amount out of the combine. And he's not unloading super fast now. So we're going to just run this right back up to the grain truck now. 
All right, we've got a half a truck here. I think that's uh, good enough to run it up to the bins and get this uh, grain dryer running. We just want to make sure that we're not going to run into any problems before we get too far down the line here. So you can see here, I've got uh, a gravity wagon as well set up to take the grain back out of the dryer. Um, but to get the grain in, we've got this uh, Brant auger set up uh, because the other auger I had wasn't quite tall enough to get up there. It wasn't working very well. So, uh, and we also need the Farm King set up in order to dump the grain into the other bin. And so it's kind of a multi auger setup here. And so we're going to hopefully see that this is going to work out for us pretty well here. It looks like it's going into the first auger. Um, I don't see it coming out to go into the second auger here, though, is my concern. And so it looks like there's an issue with this uh, first auger in some way, because if it was dumping, I'd see it at least coming out the end here. So we're going to need to grab a tractor or something to hook up to that. And so hooking up to this, it's definitely figuring itself out. Uh, managed to get it into the fill plane for the other auger, so... A uh, little concerned about that. I would have expected that to dump into there just fine, but that's okay. So let's, uh, now that we've got it into this other auger, it's not appearing to dump into the wet bin. So I think we're going to do something similar here and hook this auger up now and make sure that we've got it properly, uh, configured and so I think the first thing I need to do yep is just set that to pipe out I uh, think that's gonna work for us my only concern now is uh, whether or not this smaller auger is still lined up or not it looks like it might be just a little bit of a problem here so let's uh, let's see if I can move this truck off of the platform and maybe just shuffle this into a good spot. That looks like it's going to work. It looks like our top auger is unloading now, uh, even if it's not quite lined up perfectly. And so I'm going to go ahead and leave this little tractor here. We'll probably use it on the gravity wagon. And so I'm going to actually just hook this up to the gravity wagon right now while we're here. And as you can see, we've now got 13,000 liters of corn in this uh, dryer. And so we need to come into the global company menu, click on corn, and we're going to need to buy us some propane. And so I think I'm going to add maybe a thousand liters. We don't have a lot of money. So we're going to add a thousand liters of propane and we're going to click on uh, start. So now the dryer is on. It should start drying this corn and sending it to the output. I think it holds a certain amount on its own, but I'm expecting that's going to come out here. And this uh, auger is set up to accept crops right now, I think. so. I'm feeling like we've got this all set up and ready to go. We're going to find out here in just a second. We're going to check back in on it after we bring this truck back out to the field and uh, unload some corn and such. Uh, at, the, at a minimum, I expect to come back and just find that it's dried the corn that's there and we need to figure out how to unload it. But I'm pretty happy with the fact that we've got the corn going into the wet bin now. I'm also surprised to see that it looks like our combine is still going back here in the woods. Hasn't uh, filled up yet, so I'm very hopeful that I'm going to be able to whip around here and get caught up with him and we can uh, unload him on the way down here, which will be a very efficient way to uh, keep this guy going. The fact that we were able to take so much time to work out the dryer was very convenient however now I'm a little bit concerned just around uh, 
how long is it going to take to uh, harvest this field with a six row corn header. We are doing uh, four headland passes here. Uh, I wanted to make sure we had enough room to turn around. 24 rows tends to be a pretty typical turnaround space for a big combine. Uh, we used to run a 12 row head and we always did two headland passes. There's no fill plane inside of the combine so it's always hard to tell uh, where we're at from an unloading perspective as well. Generally the best idea is to turn the UI on and when it stops coming out in uh, bushels or in the single to double digit bushels but rather it's the tenth place that's incrementing slowly. Generally we've caught up. Corn tends to pile up pretty fast in the combine. We've also put almost 50% of uh, the grain cart here in already, so the combine must have been pretty full because I think this thing only has a 300 and something bushel tank. So I think that's the point where we've fully emptied him out now. So 54% uh, full in the grain cart, which is pretty good. And uh, that should maybe not top off the grain truck here, but uh, we'll get a decent amount in there. I think this is going to be a little bit more than half in the grain truck. I think the grain truck is probably smaller than our grain cart. So where the grain cart was just over 50% full, looks like the grain truck is just over 60% full. So I think these two are paired up pretty nicely. We'll be able to... Uh, top off a truck pretty easily if we have a full or nearly full grain cart. So let's go ahead and run up here and unload this uh, combine one more time. Then we'll grab the grain truck and run it up to the farm and see how we're doing on this uh, corn drying. We should have hopefully at least uh, one uh, notch of corn dried through the dryer so that we can kind of see how that's working. I want to say it probably does uh, some amount of drying once an hour and so I've got the time cranked up to 15x right now so by the time we get up there we should be ticking over past 9am and be able to see how much corn we've got drying. Alright we've got that corn unloading here. I'm super super curious. We got to get up to the farm and see how this dryer's working. Alright so we're coming up here you can see we've already dried uh, fair chunk of that corn. You've got the uh, top number is the wet corn and the bottom number is the uh, dry corn. So we've already uh, dried like two thirds of the corn that we put into there. Uh, we are burning through that propane pretty quick. You can see as I get closer to the bottom right, oh, you get the input and the output window as well. So uh, very encouraged that uh, this seems to be working so we'll get this dumped in there to make sure that the dryer is going to keep going and then uh, we're going to slow time back down here while we work on it. I am kind of curious what the capacity of that wet bin is so I want the corn dryer to run kind of slow so that we can maybe fill it up and get a feel for how much uh, grain can go into the wet bin. And this uh, auger, we definitely unload faster than this auger can put it up into the wet bin. So, got to kind of wait for it to catch up with us here a little bit. I do wish I could have got the uh, Batco that's unloading up into the wet bin to line up a little bit better. But sometimes with the way these augers work and the fact that I've got power lines there and such, it's probably best if we just uh, leave it be. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so I've got all the corn dumping into there right now. You can see my wet capacity is filling up here. I've got 23,000 in here already. And so if I jump into this Brant, I should be able to tell it that we want to start filling. And the grain silo complex has dry corn in it. It's got almost 300 bushels of dry corn. And so we are filling from the... Uh, corn dryer right into this gravity wagon. You can see the dry corn value on the dryer has gone down to zero now. And I've got a bunch of dry corn in this uh, gravity wagon now. So we're going to go ahead and just take this and run it right on over to uh, this other bin. I think that in the 
future, the easiest way to set this up is probably going to be to have this tractor and grain cart facing this way. Oh, no, I know why I had it facing this way is because the grain door is on my left for the gravity wagon. And so I think the thought was that I would come around here in the yard and bring it back over to this Farm King auger. Because I'm going to have to ever so gently put this uh, gravity wagon right on over this to dump it into the bin. Now, luckily, I think we've got this bin all set up and ready to go. And so the only two things that I need to check are I've got nothing in this bin to begin with. And then I need a tractor on it to run the auger. And so we're filling up the auger right now, but I don't have anything running it. Um, let's grab the case off of the mixer here. And we're going to run this over to run that uh, Farm King auger with, I think. And the trick here is just hopefully we can hook this up <clears throat> without it moving out of position. And I've got the pipe in, pipe in, pipe out. It, I know there's corn in the auger because I can see it, but it doesn't seem to be going into the bin here. So after some monkeying around I figured out the problem with the auger wasn't a problem with the auger at all we forgot to add dry maize as a fill type for these bins when we put them on this map and so I've swapped that out and uh, everything seems to be working fine so we've got some dry corn in our first bin there and if we take a quick look at this it looks like we are back to drying corn so I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, tractor and wagon right back over here underneath the corn dryer auger and we're gonna go ahead and get back out in the field because I'm pretty sure our combine is full at this point and we definitely want to keep things moving all right so it does look like our combine is stopped here out in the middle of this cornfield we do have the lands mode going, so he's cutting his way in through the middle of the field here, which is good. We should be able to get set up here alongside him and uh, unload here and then let him finish cutting through. It looks like he missed a smidge on the end here. We're going to end up running that down to get in here. Six rows is not a lot of rows. And he cut in as if he was a much larger vehicle here i don't know what's going on now because we did uh exit the game in between to fix the bins we're gonna have to start this guy back off on course play however uh we're gonna have to wait until we get him unloaded to put him back in that uh run over there where he's cutting through on the right path we're gonna go ahead and just him out a little bit to get us back over onto the right track here and I think if we get right here we should be able to tell it to just start going and it looks like course play is gonna pick up right where we left off and everything looks good here so let's go ahead and get back over here to the grain cart and we're going to be running the cart here for a bit and getting that truck filled back up, I think. These rows are just so narrow, we can barely squeeze in here with the uh, tractor and the grain cart. I'm going to get out behind this combine because I know he's going to back up here in a second while he's turning around. I think he's going to just go back down the track right next to where we cut through. Um, maybe? What is this guy doing? Huh. He did not keep going on the push play course for some reason. Well, let's go ahead and start him back up here and see if we can figure out what's going on. 
we should, I think, have made that turn and just keep going on this uh, chunk of land here. I have no idea what caused him to kick out of uh, course play like that and then pretty much just roll backwards down that hill. Very confusing. Either way, it looks like we're all good to go now. It's a little tight unloading him here with just one pass opened up, but we're making do. It looks like we're going to get about 10% of a cart per round, which is uh, pretty good. And you'd think we'd remember how much of the grain cart could hold, or rather the grain truck could hold, but uh, I've already forgotten. And so we're going to go ahead and just let this combine continue and run this over. And I just want to keep that dryer kind of moving. And so the first couple of loads here, we're going to run over to the dryer pretty quick just to get them in there. And then once we're sure the dryer is going to be able to keep running without uh, getting hung up here, we'll probably slow down on the running the trucks back up to the yard now that we've got everything dialed in up at the bins there we'll be able to unload and keep things moving pretty easily uh, without having the combine get full and wait for us too much so i think we're really going to be able to handle running this back and forth uh, as a two-man show i guess you would say with the helper there all right so after just a little bit of finagling we managed to get this auger set up. Uh, for whatever reason, I think after I restarted the game, it was in a bit of an awkward state. So we just had to hook our tractors up to it and get everything reset. Um, this Batco doesn't work so great uh, with a tractor hooked up to it when it's at that kind of an elevation. I can't get it to go up that high and have a tractor hooked up to it. So. We're uh, making do, but at some point here, we probably just need to find a better set of uh, augers. I think I've got a Westfield auger that uh, Dennis Modding edited that's been working pretty well uh, on the multiplayer server. So I probably just need to uh, bust that out at some point here and use that as opposed to uh, these augers that we've got right now. But I think we finally got everything kind of dialed in. And so we're going to let it keep going here. Um, we don't even have a full wagon of dry corn yet. So I'm just going to leave that here. And we need some more propane. So I guess we're going to take out a loan here. And then head into the global company menu and buy some propane. We're going to go ahead and just buy... A fair amount with the money that we've got uh, that way we don't have to worry about the dryer stopping we've got a fair amount of corn in there now and everything's all set up so I think it's time to get back out into the field here and focus on some corn harvesting we forgot to turn the recording back on when we got out to the field here and so we unloaded the combine there uh, while he wrapped up those short rows. And we've got a mostly full grain truck here that we're going to run back out here. I think we're definitely getting ahead of the corn dryer now, which is good. I think we're going to have capacity to put all of our corn into the corn dryer here. I uh, forgot to look and see how big this wet bin is when we were out working on the XML files, but... I think that we're going to be in pretty good shape here. I'm not too worried about running out of capacity. And as you can see, the auger setup is working now. Um, isn't a perfectly lined up there, but uh, the triggers for some of these uh, bins can be interesting at times. So sometimes you just take it when it works and you don't really need to get it quite perfect. But it always bugs me just a little bit when the uh, corn doesn't line up with the a uh, hole on the bin but we've got all this wet corn going in here if we take a quick look at the corn dryer um, input we're at 74 percent of the wet bin capacity so we are getting the wet bin filled up pretty good here 
Uh, we've got a little bit of corn dried again, 70 bushels. We'll go ahead and toss that into this gravity wagon. If we look at the gravity wagon, we're only 32% full there. So no need to move it around just yet. We'll let that set up, kind of keep going. And we're going to get right back out in the field. And uh, hopefully this time we're not going to lose our recording and be able to get a little bit of uh, grain cart action going on here. Looks like the combine has managed to get the long rows opened up here. So we're going to go ahead and get him unloaded here. I imagine he's probably getting close to full. We'll find out as we go up and back here. I know full is about 50% of this grain cart. Going in cab for a minute here. All looking pretty good. The uh, mods that I've got on this series are a little bit all over the place, but uh, this setup works pretty good. I've uh, enjoyed especially the audio on uh, some of these mods. Um, that combine's got uh, quite the roar to it, so I know I'm not the only one who has appreciated the sounds on a couple of these, uh, I believe they're CNH mods. So. I'm not sure that they were meant to be released, the versions that I have. I found them on a few different sites, so I always like to give credit where credit is due. I know um, there's a couple of new case mods that are kind of in this era that are uh, up for release at some point here. So I'm looking forward to continuing to add a little bit of diversity to the channel. I'm Definitely a John Deere fan myself, but getting a chance to play with some other equipment from time to time is uh, definitely fun times. Normally I'd be getting a start on some tillage or spreading some slurry or something at this stage, but uh, like I said earlier, I don't see a whole lot of point since we're going to make some updates and get precision farming and stuff on here over the winter and maybe even uh, get the new version of this map from MRG when it's ready to come out. And so we're just kind of focusing on getting through harvest here so we can take stock of all of our stats and get those uh, moved over after the updates. We're gonna go ahead and get some more grain in the grain truck there before we head on back up to the bin site. I think the Draw hair is uh, backed up enough, so I'm not too worried about it. And we just need to uh, focus on getting this field finished up. I'm uh, hoping I don't cause course play any grief here and it gets hung up and distracted like last time I came up behind it. I am on a fairly old version of course play here on this uh, save. I just realized I'm on uh, .0272 and I think on Flint Hills I've been running with .0323. So at some point here when we're doing our other updates to mods and such, I need to get a new version of course play put onto this save. Uh, there's been quite a few improvements to course play uh, over the last month or so. And uh, Dot 0323 is the version I was using on Flint Hills with a lot of success. Uh, and I know course play is uh, one of those mods that updates every few days, so sometimes it can be hard to keep track of the updates. And uh, from time to time, a few things get broken along the way as they're adding new features and trying to fix existing bugs so it's always good to find a version that works for you and kind of stick with it for a little bit and test uh, the new version to make sure that what you use course play for is still functional along the way. I know a lot of things that they've been working on fixing are things that I've had problems with in the past so um, I'm always curious to try new updates uh, but course play tends to be one of those mods where it's the uh, I guess the saying is the devil you know where 
you know, I know what's working and what's not in the versions of course play that I put a lot of time on. And every time I upgrade, I feel like I'm trying to learn how course play works all over again. Uh, mostly because there's a lot of quirky things with course play where, you know, it's broke, but you learn how to deal with what's broke. So we, uh, we definitely need to check out the latest versions, especially since I've been away from farm sim for a few weeks here. Uh, it, it's always good to just kind of see what's going on. And so at some point here, I'll need to get that set up and tested. So we'll definitely be trying that out. Uh, and I'm also planning on doing some more live streams here soon. So um, stay tuned for that. We may even uh, do one where we check out the latest and greatest version of course play and kind of experiment with what's changed and what kind of issues we run into uh, on stream. I do tend to do a lot of that stuff outside of the normal series just because I know people don't necessarily like to watch me struggle with uh, things that are broke. I think that uh, most people would rather um, dial in and hear about what was broke and how to fix it after the fact. So um, live streams tend to be good for kind of figuring things out on the fly. I always like coming up into the yard and seeing the steam coming out of the corn dryer means things are still working most likely haven't quite got used to the turn radius on this green truck i should be able to get this backed up here on the first try but uh seems like i gotta take a couple passes at it every time right now still and as long as we're here we might as well empty the dryer out into the gravity wagon here we're not even quite half full on that gravity wagon, so we're going to continue to let that sit there for now. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we've still got some capacity in the wet bin, if just a little bit. We're at 97% of our wet bin capacity there, so I'm guessing that's a 70,000 liter bin is how it's set up right now looking at the numbers it's always confusing to bounce back and forth between uh, unit convert on most of the core in-game interfaces and looking at leaders with things with uh, global company and whatnot it would be nice to have an add-on for global company that uh, let it use the unit convert stats Looks like we're on the last few passes here. We've got long rows on one side and these uh, angled rows that are going to continue to get shorter over here on the other side of the pass. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get him unloaded. It looks like we've got, what, two more rounds after we get up to the end here? 12 rows to my left and 12 rows to the right of the combine here. Combine was pulling a little hard going up that hill while unloading, so we've got about enough out of him to let him keep going here, I think. So we're gonna get whipped around here and whoa, go into the woods, it looks like. Finish unloading him on the way back down the hill here instead. Should be a piece of cake. I think I'm gonna put my pipe in though, just in case. I don't want him to see that I'm here and stick his auger out and have an accident. You can't trust the workers here. They get a little bit uh, crazy sometimes. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. And so this is a good opportunity to check out the inside of the combine cab here while we're harvesting corn. Oh, I do love the CNH uh, warning sticker on the inside. Nice one, dude. <laughs> it's over here too, Bucko. I like it. Yep, the interior on this mod is actually really well done as well. I don't do a lot of in-cab, but uh, maybe on uh, the live streams we'll start doing a little bit more of that. Um, see how it goes. I always find that it's a little bit much single player. Um, if I don't have a couple of jobs going with course play and other things, it's... Uh, a little bit slow paced and so I like to keep things moving in these series um, but we are gonna be looking to mix things up and get some feedback 
And as always, I love the comments uh, that I get on all my videos. And so if there's uh, something that you'd like to see, um, something new, something different, a cool mod that I should check out, uh, as always, please just leave a comment in the uh, description below. And a friendly reminder, we do have a Discord server for the Kedark Farms community. Uh, lots of friendly people on there. We're pushing about a thousand members at this point on the Discord community server. Uh, we do have a uh, multiplayer server that's open to everybody in the community. We're currently running Midwest Horizons with uh, Precision Farming turned on. Uh, we've got three farms on the server. A Case Farm, a John Deere Farm, obviously, and an Agco Farm. Uh, and so you're able to hop on there and join whichever farm suits your fancy. And I uh, also have added the ability for people to join the channel as members. There is a join channel button now in YouTube uh, right next to the subscribe button. And uh, along with getting into some members only areas of the Discord server, uh, we also have a members only multiplayer server which is uh, currently running Marksville, Wisconsin by MRG Mapping. Uh, and uh, that's got uh, Seasons and Precision Farming on it right now. And so I know um, the staff members from my Discord server, as well as uh, a number of members now, are running uh, different farms on that server. And so I try to be on there a couple times a week and having a lot of fun running some uh, dairy operations there. So maybe at some point soon I'll do a uh, live stream on the multiplayer servers and kind of show off what we've got going on there in multiplayer. But I think uh, once we get unloaded here and get back down towards, uh, well, the middle part of the field here where I can cut over to the grain truck, we'll go ahead and get the grain cart unloading into the grain truck here just because I do know it unloads pretty slow and then we'll uh, be able to grab the combine when it gets uh, done with this last pass here and I think that the grain truck's going to have room for all of this grain that we've got left here so this should be our last to dump back up into the bins which is uh, fine I don't think the grain dryer is going to quite be emptied so Really, this was perfect size. If we'd uh, been able to plant one of our larger fields in corn like we'd uh, planned, we'd probably have run out of wet bin capacity, um, which would have been interesting. Uh, and so that's something that will be fun with this map in the future, is to have to um, think about how much bin capacity we have for wet and dry corn. We might actually have to use one of those uh, four bins to store wet corn in the interim until the dryer can catch up, which will be interesting. Um, I know in real life uh, farmers are often having to deal with uh, where do they put their wet corn while the dryer is catching up. A lot of times you get kind of filled up where your wet bin capacity is full and your trucks and everything are all full and you just kind of call it a night at that point and wait for things to get caught up overnight before you jump back into things so there's always something about the last pass of harvest for the year it makes me a little sad harvest is definitely my favorite part of farming we'll go ahead and in cab and take the last few rows ourselves Close out of this course play course. Plus we've got to pick up the few straggler rolls that we miss inevitably due to course play. And we've got just a little bit of corn here left in the combine so we'll run down here and just toss this into the grain truck as well. I don't think we're going to have any real problems getting it in there. Now the real question is, can I see my downspout? I can. And let's see if I can get this over the truck. I'm used to a uh, 12 row head here. 
So spacing away from the truck is a little bit interesting, but I'd say we've got that pretty good. So we're all empty here with the combine. We're going to go ahead and shut that off there. I want to get this grain back up to the bins and take a note of how much corn we managed to harvest here. All right, so we've got the dryer completely filled up here. We are uh, still running some corn, uh, but we're not going to quite be able to get all of this grain truck emptied out here. The augers do hold a little bit of corn, but we've still got 193 bushels here in the grain truck. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, empty what we've got here in the grain dryer. And then I think run this over and put it in the bins as long as we're here. But we are going to have to let this uh, corn dryer run for a bit to catch up and take stock of all the corn that we've got. Uh, I am going to try and do a little bit of math here. So once we get this emptied here into our bin, I'll be able to once again see the leaders available to us. So this gravity wagon doesn't unload very fast, which isn't a problem. And it's probably actually the farm king that's getting uh, backed up here. I'm not sure. But either way, we've got all of the corn out of that and into the bins. If I come here and bring up my F1 menu, you can see we put 23,000 liters of dry corn into this bin already. And if we run over here... We're still not at a point where we've got all of this corn into the corn dryer yet. We've got quite a bit of it into the augers here. But, uh, you know, if we think about the fact that we've got 70,000 uh, in the dryer right now and 20,000 something in the bin here, 23,000, we're at 93,000 from what we can see. And we've got quite a bit in this auger and truck setup still and so i think that uh here we just emptied a bit you know i think we're probably sitting at maybe a hundred thousand liters of uh corn here which is somewhere around 2800 bushels 2800 bushels maybe you know upwards of 3000 bushels we got out of that field total which, which all things considered it's not that big of a field this is a 16-acre field, so I think we did pretty good on it. Um, this is where I think precision farming would come in handy. Um, being able to kind of see the breakdown on that field would be nice. And so if we think about the fact that we've got, you know, maybe 3,000 bushels of uh, corn there, and then, you know, if we look at this bin, we've got another 5,000... 300 ish bushels of uh, corn in here uh, at 186,000 liters. So, um, oh, I mean, soybeans. Yeah, this is our soybeans, right? So, yeah, we got a little over 5,000 bushels of soybeans and almost 3,000 bushels of corn. So, we're in a pretty good spot. If we uh, watch these markets here, at some point, uh, we're going to be able to sell. Um, our soybeans for quite a bit next summer. In the winter here, we should be able to sell our corn. Um, dry corn tends to run quite a bit better than the standard corn. I mean, you can even see the price difference here. If we were to sell our corn straight up, we'd be getting 988, but because we dried it, we get 1217. So I think as we wrap up, uh, this phase of the series will probably sell this corn off uh, come winter and that's gonna allow us to pay off some of our loans here we got six hundred and thirty thousand dollars in loans right now uh, which is pretty significant and so if we just kind of think about uh, the fact that we've got 653 bushels right now we've got quite a few more than that coming soon because i think this is only showing our dry capacity we're hoping that that's going to at least put a dent in uh, what we owe on our loans cut our interest down a little bit so that we're not paying quite so much every day in interest 
So with that, I think this is a good spot to wrap up today's episode. We're going to let this corn dryer keep running for a bit off camera. And we'll check back in on things uh, once we get all of the corn in the bins here. That's all for today. Ketterk.